On today's Sound Iron Session, we're going to be breaking down the track inspired by video game soundtracks like Ori and the Will of the Wisps and Moss, so stick around. So on today's Sound Iron Session, I'm going to be breaking down a track that I wrote that was heavily inspired by games like Ori and the Will of the Wisps, which was composed by Gareth Coker, and Moss, which was composed by Jason Graves. And I really like these soundtracks. They have a very whimsical and fantasy sound to them. They both involve these small characters that are traveling and adventuring around through these different landscapes. And I really just love the sound of it. So I wanted to write something inspired by that. I wasn't trying to drive too much from how they wrote it, but more just kind of taking the overall feel and trying to compose something in that style. So let's go ahead and listen to the track and then we'll start breaking down what instruments I used and how I composed it. All right, so that's the track, now let's go ahead and start breaking it down. So when I was first coming up with this piece of music, I was just playing around with two chords. I just had B minor, and then E major. And I just liked the sound of those two chords back to back. It has a very uh, fantasy, kind of mystical sound to it. And so I was just going back and forth between those, maybe arpeggiating it. And then I started trying to come up with a melody. And the melody that I came up with was this. So that little last part, the chord progression changes a little bit. It goes into this uh, E major, this kind of like sus4 type thing. because I didn't want to just go back and forth between. So I wanted to find something that makes it feel like it's kind of lifting up and moving a little bit more and not just kind of staying in one place. So together when you hear this, And I liked how that sounded, and then I was like, okay, where is this going to go? And I wanted to keep that uplifting feeling even more, so I started playing around with it a little bit more. So as this melody goes... And then it plays again. And then I wanted to take it up and give it to where the melody starts to change a little bit. And then the chords are going to be G major. and then A major. So with this melody it goes. And then we got this B major sus4. So it started with B minor, but then it ends with B major. And uh, theoretically, I'm not sure why that works, but I thought it sounded nice. So the next part of this is to start doing some orchestration and orchestrating these chords and melodies throughout the different sections of the orchestra. So some of the different instruments that you'll hear in soundtracks like Ori and the Will of the Wisps or even Ori and the Blind Forest is the use of harp. So I have our Elysium harp loaded up here, and I wanted to just kind of find a chord that just kind of outlined it. So let's have a listen to this.
So I thought that sounded cool. And then as it starts to progress, you'll start to hear some stuff like choirs, as well as some of these kind of like glockenspiel sort of sounds. And it's not a glockenspiel, but it is a effects preset from our recent weighted strings, the Hopkin Instrumentarium weighted strings. And it just has this really beautiful sound to it. It sounds like a glockenspiel, but it almost sounds like a glockenspiel in some completely different universe. So let's listen to the harp and this together. And I'm just using this just to kind of accent certain notes and to give it a little bit more of that sparkle and shimmery sound. And I ran this instrument through the black hole reverb just to give it a little bit more of that spacey atmospheric sound. And then it's also going to be using some different choirs. I have the Venus and Mars from the Olympus Symphonic Choir as well as Mercury Elements just doing some vowel sustains. So let's have a listen to all this together. This is just doing an mm articulation. And then the Mercury is doing an ah, just to give it a little bit more of that kind of magical sound. And then the next thing I wanted to do was figure out which instrument group I wanted to use to start playing the melody. And I decided to use solo flute because it just has a little bit more of an intimate sound and still has that bit of kind of fantasy element to it. And this is going to be using the symphony series woodwinds that we did with native instruments. So let's have a listen to that. So after that I wanted to start bringing in some strings, so I wanted to use the violas to play these tremolos just to give it that shimmery sort of soft textured background with the strings. And then I have the violins, the cellos, and the basses doing some pizzicatos. And with the cellos and the basses I wanted to not, not just have them playing the same pitz melody, but more kind of playing off of each other. So if we look at this you can see that there's one part of the basses that are doing the first part. So I'm going to solo just the basses so you can hear what's going on. So that's all the basses are doing. And then this is what the cellos are doing, so they're kind of playing off. So the basses start and then the cellos kind of finish it. So you can hear the whole melody is a boom, 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 but the basses are only doing the boom, 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 and then the cellos are finishing it. And then I also have the violins doing some pizzicatos, as well as the first and second violins from our Hyperion solo violins playing some pizzas as well. So let's have a listen to just the whole thing for the strings by themselves. And then you can start to hear the violins become a little bit more involved by playing some very high sustains just to make it feel like it's coming into something. And then the violins take over the melody so it gets a little bit more bigger. And then we also have some piano as well. So let's listen to it with the piano. Just playing its own thing, sort of supporting it. And then they're playing these arpeggios behind it. Because I was thinking how else could I involve the piano and not just playing chords so I thought maybe just very soft arpeggiation of the chords and it's just going between G, A, G, A, B sus, 4 and then B major. And then I also have the brass 
pretty much doing most of the harmonic support as far as the chords. I wanted the strings to more be the melody and the cellos and the basses kind of holding down root notes and then having the brass, just some horns, some tenor trombones and some tubas just supporting the harmonic structure of the chords. So let's listen to just the brass by itself so you can hear that. Very soft. I didn't want them to be too brassy, more just kind of warm and somber. Now let's hear that with the strings. So with the violin melody, I'm also complementing it with the second solo violin from Hyperion Solo Violins. And this one is a little bit more of that romantic, very expressive type of legato. And it's the P layer of the legato. And I'm also playing it an octave higher. So if you listen to just the strings and you can hear the violins, you can hear that second violin is just playing it up an octave higher on the melody. And I like to do this just to give a little bit more definition to the strings as well as just giving it a little bit more of that feel of it being a real orchestra by having a solo player with the ensemble. And the strings, the main strings that you're hearing is from Hyperion Strings Elements. And then to add a little bit of percussion, I'm using this percussion sound. It's the Tympanon 15 from our Ancient Greek percussion. And I wanted to use this because I wanted to find some other type of percussion, not just typical orchestral percussion, but just something else with a, a bit of a different sound just to kind of add a little bit more of rhythm behind all of these other orchestral elements. So let's listen to this. Very subtle. And then on the second half of the track, I wanted to add some more vocals, so I added a solo vocal, and I'm using the soprano legato from Voices of Rapture. And this complements the Olympus Symphonic Choir very well, especially when it comes to melodies. So let's listen to just this, just the choir section. So without that, it sounds like this. Mainly you hear Venus doing the melody. So bringing back that soprano solo vocal again. Helps that melody stand out a little bit more. And then to add some little embellishments in the track before the big second half comes in, I wanted to use some harp glisses. So this is one that I created myself using the gliss section in Elysium Harp. And I just set it to the chords that I wanted and just kind of played around with the direction and the rate just to get it to feel like it fit the track. So if I'm playing anywhere on the keyboard, I can get that gliss anywhere. So that's really nice. And when you listen to it together in the track, it sounds like this. Just to help build it a little bit, but very soft. And then on measure 10 where this violin string comes in where it's just playing a sustain, I wanted to layer it with some of the other string sustains from Hyperion solo violins. So here's the first violin and the second violin flotando sustains. And I like layering these with the other Hyperion strings sustains because they have a different texture, they're a little bit more softer and delicate and they're played a little bit differently. So by combining those you get a little bit more 
texture when it comes to the strings. So these are the strings again all together. So I really like that because combining those different articulations with the strings really helps add a little bit more texture and a little bit more character to whatever sort of string melodies or chords that you're playing. All right, so that about wraps up this sound iron session. If you like these videos, make sure to give them a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more, as we'll always be posting some new composition videos as well as new walkthroughs for future products and much more. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, thank you so much. See you in the next one. Take care. Thank you.